Hey there, fight friends. Andy Carter with MMA.ca here with Aaron Jeffrey, Bellator, middleweight, and I've never felt so short in my life. I need a step stool to interview. Aaron, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. How are you? Awesome, thanks. So, of, of course, you know, Aaron is fighting Dalton Rasta at, at uh, Bellator MMA later on this summer. Uh, Aaron, really tough camp. I guess, no, I take that back. Was this a tough camp for you, getting ready? It's not even over yet, but how's the preparation going? Uh, it's good, man. Um, I don't really do, like, in camp, out of camp. Like, you see me, I'm here yeah. all the time, whether I'm, like, 12 weeks out, no fight booked, I'm three weeks out. It doesn't really change anything, so... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just same shit year-round for me. Yeah, of course. A lot of the top-tier guys like you, they're, it's a lifestyle, right? You're always in the gym, you're always training, you're always preparing. So you told me that you're actually leaving Niagara t tomorrow, and where are you going? I'm going down to Florida to train at Killcliffe again. Yeah. So you've been there a, a couple times now, right? And uh, that must be a good experience overall for you if you're going back. Yeah, man, it's sick. I think this is my fifth time, actually. Yeah, yeah it's really good there. Yep. So tell me what you know about Dalton and how you see him as an opponent coming up. He's good, man. He's he's well-rounded. He can wrestle. He can strike. Um, he's he's undefeated. I think he's like seven and zero amateur and eight and zero pro. So he's he's good, obviously. Uh, I think he's like maybe a little bit green. Um, all of his fights have been in Pelotor. All of his pro fights. Uh, he's fought not the stiffest competition. Um, so I'm I'm looking to like test him and, and make him feel what it's like to fight like real top ten guys. Yeah. So Bellator fans have really taken to you. You had your second last fight against Austin. It was a dominant performance. You really opened up a lot of eyes there. And then the last fight didn't really go your way against John Salter. It was actually a lot of fans were kind of disappointed. I'm sure not as disappointed as you, but uh, John basically was your your backpack for a lot of the fight, and and you know it was tough to get things going. Uh, tell us how you felt. I mean, disappointing of course, but after that fight, uh, your your how you felt about it, and if that's evolved over time. Yeah, um, disappointed for sure. Uh, it was, I'm like confused still, man. I don't know why it went like that. I I don't think I fought near what I'm capable of. Um, like I can make some excuses, I can give some reasons, but honestly, I, I don't really know what happened. I just shit the bed. I guess it was just a, a really bad night. People have those nights. You, you hope that it never happens in the cage, like in front of the audience and everything, but uh, it did and I'm just looking to get past it and perform to my abilities in my next fight. Mm -hmm. The first time I ever saw you was at Muay Thai Niagara, probably like, I'm not not 10 years ago, but maybe like six, seven years ago, somewhere around there, and you were like a baby face with your super short haircut, and it's kind of great watching you and the guys sort of evolve and level up and, and get better. What's it like being part of a team like Niagara Top Team where you and Tisha and Jasmine and you're all started off a certain place and now you're all reaching for the stars? Yeah, it's cool, man. Uh, I get asked this in a lot of interviews, and I kind of say the same thing every time. Like, you don't really stop to appreciate any of it. Um, like, I don't think us as fighters or, like, Chris and D-Marks as coaches, we're not, like, sitting back and, and taking a look at all of this and being like, yeah. wow, look look what we've done. This is so awesome. I think we're still uh, it's still the same mindset as if we're, like, white belts, right? That's what they say, white belt mindset. We're still trying to work our way up. Like, we're, we're not done yet. We just want to keep improving and, and keep, uh, like, reaching new goals. Do you think that's something you should be taking time for, be cognizant of it, or is it too important to be focused on what you're actually doing in training? I don't know, man. I'm torn. Um, like I, I try and appreciate what I have and, and how far I've come and everything, but uh, I, I don't think you can settle in too much. I don't think you can get too comfortable. Okay. Last question. Uh, UFC 289 this weekend, BFL 77 this weekend. Tell me what your thoughts are on your teammates, uh, Jasmine specifically fighting this Saturday, and uh, Mike Malott as well. Yeah, I'm stoked, man. I think, uh, I think both of them have great matchups. Um, I think this is an opportunity for them to to build their names even more than they already have. Like Mike's on the main card, he's the third fight on the card, right? So this is huge for him in front of uh, the Canadian fans. I, I think he makes a big name for himself and maybe cracks top 15 or gets close. Same thing with Jazz, she's got a pretty big name opponent, again, fighting in front of the hometown crowd. Um, I think this is gonna be like a big kind of coming out party for both of them. Fantastic, I think it's gonna be really good for a lot of Niagara top team, a lot of you guys. Uh, and. Once any of your names get elevated, just everyone else goes along for the ride, right? So I wish you the best of luck. Good luck in Florida. Congratulations on all your hard work and preparation. And we wish you the best at Bellator. Thanks, Andy. Appreciate it. There you go, fight friends. Aaron Jeffrey fighting in Bellator later on this summer. Wish him luck.